Crops like maize and rice have received significant government and donor funding for breeding foundation seed for multiplication. However, sorghum seed production has not received the necessary attention to ensure improved foundation seed and is always available for manufacture of certified seeds for farmer use. The crop is currently receiving a boost to increase production in the Upper East region. Join news as Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin was at the Manga station of the Savannah Agri. Institute Sari of the CSIR in Boko and has filed this report. Coming up with foundation seed of Kapala and Dorado for farmers who take up, have identified some uh, certified seed growers. So when we get a foundation seed, the farmers will pick up this and grow and we get certified seed for the, dry, the coming rainy season. So what we do, we take advantage of dry season, produce the seed and then farmers will also take up the advantage and also produce along the rivers where we have water. We have tried to introduce irrigation, drip irrigation to it because dry season at this environment you will not get water. The production of two foundation seas, Kapala and Dorado at the Savannah Agriculture Research Institute, Sari, of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research will enable farmers to produce certified seed for commercial uses. Certified seed is the progeny of foundation seed and its production is supervised and approved by certification agencies. This is the commercial seed which is available to the farmers and its genetic purity should be 90 here is Dr. Peter Asongre Anabiri, plant breeder at the Manga Station. Our role in this project is to be able to come up with foundation seed. In, initially, we were supposed to produce only breeder seed, but we realized that it is also a problem getting the foundation seed from the farmers. So we have this plot that you have seen here is actually a foundation seed plot that we are producing so that the farmers can pick it up and, and produce the, the certified seed. With time, we will we will go back to our primary seed production, that is the breeder seed production. So the farmer, when the farmers are, are having the foundation seed, then when we get enough farmers that will be producing the foundation seed, then we ourselves stay with the breeder seed production so that the farmers can continue. Shogum is not only healthy and nutritious, but has a reasonably good drought tolerance. Shogum is a crop that is grown mostly up north. It's a Sahelian crop or the Guinea Savannah crop. And we are in the Guinea Savannah zone. And this is a crop that requires not so much water. Shogum and Miller will not require so much water. Less than 1,000 millimeters a year, they will still perform, provided it is distributed the right way. And it also requires an amount of sunshine. And we have enough sunshine here for it to be able to grow. It is used for a lot of sound, a lot of attractions traditional activities here, including festivals, including uh, weddings or call them customary rites and even sometimes the sacrifices because they use it as a way of carrying out some of their, their sacrificial things. And it is also a food source. They can use it to prepare tz. It can be used for, uh, for porridge. That's why the people up north here will continuously hold on to the crop. While its production is increasing, it is one of the crops with the least assistance in terms of research and development, which is impeding its growth. And we are people that want to be able to preserve this tradition, preserve this culture, and ensure that we come up with new varieties. At least in the meantime, what we have now, we have to preserve it. And then we have worked currently, the last time the variety release committee came, there were some varieties that were released. And we are in this cropping season that is coming, we we'll do a lot of uh, demonstrations and then we we'll look at upscaling of those things. So sogum is very important in the cultural settings of the people of the north for, because that's what we use for TZ, that's what we use for azonkub, that's what we use for porridge. In comparison to maize and rice, which have better seeds produced virtually every year, sogum has not seen the introduction of enhanced varieties in the past five years. Farmers have been using their own seed for many years. According to Dr. Songre, the repeated use of seed has contributed to lower yields and farmers' inability to become climate smart. This is due to the fact that present seed has a long gestation time, whereas rainfall patterns in sorghum producing areas are growing shorter. Millet and sorghum are climate smart varieties. They are climate smart resilient crops. One, because we have those that mature between 75 and 100 days. That is a, that's a maximum of three miles. Now, when you look at the rainfall pattern now that we have in the Upper East and parts of Northern region, you realize that we used to have it around April, May. Now, the, it is be, between May and June. Before the rainy season sets, it's around middle of June. So when you still plant sorghum, which is a climate resilient crop, you'll be able to get your, your yield. Because these are materials that mature within 1900 days. 
And once the climate is becoming shorter, or the radius is becoming shorter, you need to look for short duration materials that can fit the niche. And sorghum is one of them. Pearl millet is one of them, especially the early maturing ones. So that's why we think that sorghum is very critical. Because you can have the legumes, but the legumes you cannot use them to prepare TZ. If you want to prepare TZ, you want to prepare porridge, you will have to go to millet or sorghum. And that's why it's important for us as a climate smart material. Because it doesn't require so much rain, like I mentioned. Between 600 and 900 millimeters of rainfall the whole year if it is well distributed. Poor quality seeds are unable to use other variables such as water and nutrients that plants require to enhance yields. As a result, there will be less sogum available and hence less money for farmers. According to the plant breeder, the decision to invest in sogum seeds is timely, giving the crops growth and growing demand, which necessitates greater effort aimed at raising production to satisfy the rising need. One of the things that we are doing is that, yes, why we are using irrigation is that we want to be able to see how we can get at, at least three crops in a season. When we are using this one, Kapala and Dorado, they are 100 and 110 days. So three in a season, you can grow it three times. At least you can grow it two times. At most, you can grow it three times. So we want to see how we can, with this irrigation, we are able to increase the number of times that you turn up turn out the seed that will be made available, the, the class of the seed that will be available to farmers. So we go into the irrigation and we're also help, telling the farmer that it is also a good thing. Dry season, don't just sit wa wasting away. See how you can get this irrigation facility, grow the crop, and it is market for you, it is uh, uh, money for you. Water scarcity is growing more significant as global climate change and related issues worsen. Agriculture development is linked to water resources and its long-term viability is under threat. Shogum is a cereal crop that is an important source of food, feed, fodder for the developing world's semi-arid tropical regions. It is one of the top six cereal crops providing diet for over 250 million people in semi-arid tropic and dry land areas of South Asia and Africa. Shogum is also considered a climate smart crop because of its greater tolerance to heat, drought and salinity. A report by Mohamed Nuruddin. Videos. I'm going to easily